Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Eat, Burn, Sleep, I'm Yalda and I'm here to talk to you today about why diets fail. Uh, since I've brought up my seven day plan, I have so many people asking me questions about it and I realized that um, there are some things I would like to share with you, things that I draw from my experience and some from some studies I have read, um, research I've done over the past 10, 11 years, and observations I've made around me. The thing is that I want to share with you is the fact that very strict diets fail. I've read this wonderful book uh, by Professor Tim Proctor called The Diet Smith, and he conducted on st a study on 5,000 pairs of obese twins and one of the things he, so what he's trying to do in this book is try and work out what the cause of obesity is. And to cut a long story short, it's basically the microbiome, like the, your gut health, your, your gut bacteria. And there's some genetic factors, external factors, but mainly it's the bacteria in the gut which determines, it's shown, more and more studies is showing that gut bacteria determines if you're fat, or skinny, if you're diabetic or not, if you have autoimmune issues or not. I mean, there are other factors, but this plays a major role. And what he noticed when he studied all these twins who were obese is that when you had pairs of twins where one of them had dieted, the one who went on strict diets was actually heavier with a f bigger fat composition than the twin who just ate whatever they wanted. And my experience with diets is the following. You can do whatever you want with it, but I just want to tell you my point of view. I have never managed in my entire life to stick to a diet for looks. I haven't. <laughs> I'm not vain enough for that. Uh, I have managed to be extremely strict when, it's, when it was about my health, when I had to get my health back on track, I've done some you know, pretty drastic things uh, when I was testing several diets and because doctors couldn't fix me and I was so ill with ulcerative colitis and autoimmune hemolytic anemia, two autoimmune conditions. But I have never managed to stick to a diet just to lose some weight. If you tell me that uh, I'm dieting for um, to age well, to be stronger, to have mental clarity, to be healthier, and one of the consequences is to be at a healthier weight, then I can totally stick to that, and that is my lifestyle now. Every time I have tried to stick to something that was too strict in terms of calorie counting, I have become obsessed with food. As simple as that. All I think about is when am I eating next? And why is that? It's because humans are wired to survive. If you put yourself in a situation of scarcity, of survival, your brain is going to kick in and think, you know what, I need to feed this person so that this person doesn't die. They need food. We're going to do everything we can to find food. And then once we find it, we're going to do everything we can to not burn it too fast. And that's how a lot of people can slow their metabolism by dieting too much. And that's what this professor shows in his book. I have been to some, um, you know, health spas, um, which um, I won't name, but if you've watched my Instagram stories, you, you'll know which ones. And I have got the, gone there for, you know, health purposes, like to get my tummy better and get some tests carried out. And, and a lot of those have very strict diets and calorie counting. And every time I go, I really suffer. What happens is it raises my cortisol levels as well because it creates stress. So A, all I think of food, I can't relax, I feel stressed, and I don't lose as much as when I go to this other place called Chivasom in Thailand where yes, the food is healthy, but there's no calorie restriction and it's delicious. And, and there, every time I go, I lose so much weight and I eat delicious meals. So when I went um, last May to this other place in Austria, where uh, 
I, I mean, it was really interesting because um, we did some tests of my, uh, the, my gut bacteria. I spotted which strains were missing. I managed to take a probiotic on empty stomach after that. That was targeting that strain of bacteria that was missing. That was great. It improved me. What was, what was great is I got some sleep, but I lost four kilos in a week. And guess what? I gained them all back in the next four weeks after I came back. There is no way one can lose four kilos of fat in a week. It is physiologically impossible. So I lost water, I probably lost some muscle mass and rebuilding muscle mass takes much longer. So from that point of view, I wasn't very happy. Also, it is a stress you're putting your body under. It's a huge fluctuation. And finally, what happens is because you put your body in such a place of scarcity, after that, your body is going to hunt and hold on to that food longer and you're going to burn it less. It's going to hold on to those calories more and you're going to burn less and it slows the metabolism down. And that is the reason why I really am against calorie restrict, uh, restriction, totally against it. Um, so in my seven day plan, the way I suggest um, you um, to, I mean, people who buy it, uh, the way I suggest from my experience again, and from all the reading I've done, is to focus on anti-inflammatory foods without restricting calories. And what I find happens then, at least for me, is I do it from a place of nurturing. I'm eating these delicious foods, which are go full of nutrients. I'm making chicken soup and that's the collagen in it helps the rebuilding of my gut lining. I'm eating some berries that are full of antioxidants and vitamin C and it's going to help me fight against viral potential viruses during the winter. Um, I'm having enough fiber. So all that fiber and roughage is going to drag out bad bacteria from my gut and excess estrogen. I'm having uh, enough vegetables so I keep my system alkaline and I know that cancer cells have more difficulties surviving in an alkaline environment. When I follow a list of foods with these things in mind, rather than seeing a restriction, I feel like I'm giving myself things. I feel like there is abundance and that I'm not being deprived. And even when I do periods of fasting with intermittent fasting, I know that it has been proven scientifically, in fact, Tim Proctor talks about it in his book, that when we do periods of fasting, bad bacteria has shown to be dragged out of the gut. It gives a chance to the good bacteria to fight off the bad one and you basically poo your bad bacteria. <laughs> if you do intermittent fasting, you'll notice that during those periods of fast, you, you go to the bathroom more and you're basically getting rid of the baddies. Um, and this is my approach to dieting, is making healthy choices and not be too obsessive about it. So. That's why I say after my seven day plan, stick to good choices 80% of the time from those lists of food. And then 20% of the time, do have that glass, wine, glass of wine, do have whichever food makes you happy, but just not all the time. Make sure that your health building blocks are there, that the building is strong and healthy. And then on top of that, you can add a chair on the cake and enjoy yourself with your friends because being social is good for you. Um, and that's good for your mental health. 60% of the neurotransmitters are located in the gut. If you're happy, you're healthy. Um, I hope I'm not being too intense and I'm, what I'm saying is making sense. Again, I'm talking from my experience, but I hope it does help you. If you like these kind of videos, give me some little thumbs up and I'll carry on uh, doing them. If this was going in too much depth, let me know. Uh, if it was good enough, let me know. Uh, if you want to purchase the seven day plan, it's on my website, eatburnsleep.com and I will link it below as well. I hope you enjoy this and look after yourself and do not be too obsessive and make sure to nurture yourself. 
that's where help comes from. Thank you for watching.